I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 30th of June, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today, we're going to be talking here in the garden. We're not going out for any trips. I know we've had to do that a couple times this week, but sometimes I've got to do that. Like, it's hard to get out every day, but we're going to be talking about how you need to think about where you work and where you live because this comes up all the time and it's an important concept to get people to understand that just because you're in Nicaragua doesn't mean you're working in Nicaragua and when we say you don't want to work here it doesn't mean you don't want to work from here just not here we're, we're going to go into that after the bump I know it's nothing new but it's so good to see you we do this every day and I'm still so amazed by you so home In a recent episode, I talked about how you do not want to work in Nicaragua. You absolutely, positively are not allowed to. You don't want to. It doesn't make sense. But of course, everyone's like, but I need to make money. But I need to, how do I, but there's so many things that this confuses people on. And the reason that it's been confusing, now I'm speaking primarily to people from the US, Canada, and Western Europe. If you're Nicaraguan, this doesn't apply to you. If you're coming from a place that doesn't let you work, like that doesn't apply to you. But for normal viewers of mine, people who speak English and are coming from those countries, people who are interested in moving to Nicaragua, learning more about Nicaragua, potentially watching uh, to, to work in Nicaragua or to have income while living here, all those, right, so you, it's obvious who I'm talking to, right? I'm not talking to absolutely everyone, but you know who you are, the people who are trying to figure out how to earn a living while coming from those countries. The thing you need to understand, because everyone gets this wrong, everyone says the wrong words. There's, there's two sets of descriptions as to your life that people use, and you don't want to mix them, right? One is this casual family and friends terminology, and it's like, Hey, where do you live? Oh, I live in Nicaragua, right? I, I have a house, I, ha I rent an apartment. Well, let's take my own life. In, in 2016, I moved to Greece, right? Did I become a Greek citizen? No. Did I get Greek residency? No. Did I have a house in Greece? Yes. Did I give up my house in the United States? Yes. Did I have a place to send mail in the US? No. Did I have any ties to the US other than a storage unit? No. I mean, I had family and friends, of course, history, but I don't have anything, no, no thing going on in the US. I was in Greece. So I lived in Greece. I moved to Greece. I took all of my worldly possessions that we were living with, put them on a plane with my family and went to Greece. We didn't have dogs at the time and went to Greece. And we lived on the island of Crete, just outside the city of Rathamno. And it was amazing. We lived in Greece. Our primary residence during the time that we lived there was Greece. To normal people, this is, you lived in Greece. It makes sense. Like, you don't really have to go into it very much. Where do you live? And some people might say, but you didn't really move to Greece, right? You're, you're still an American. You still live in the U.S. Well, where's my house in the U.S.? I don't have a house. I don't have an apartment. I don't have a place. If you sent me to the U.S., legally, I could go find a place to live, of course. But I don't have a place to live. I do not live in the United States. I live in Greece. That's where my home is during that time. Um, so in general, people understand this and they, and they mostly are able to, to grasp how it works. And when you say you live in Greece, they, they know what, they, what you mean. Legally, however, there is a completely different set of where you live, what you do and, and things. And you gotta be careful not to take this where I live concept that exists for people in just normal language and your job and switch things because um, every job takes the normal English terminology and puts it on top of incorrectly mapped actual legal terms and, and then everything goes haywire. So you have to be very careful. Technically, the terminology that your, your work uses is probably wrong, right? Because they should never ask where you live. They don't care where you live. That is not in the interest of your employer. It is none of their business. Your payroll company does not care where you live. It is none of their business. But they will say those words because they use them to mean something else. So you need to be aware that the thing that people tend to do is take where they live and then take that information and feed it to people who have no business knowing where you live. It is not their right to know that. 
there are exceptions, right? You work for the, you, you know, you work for the CIA and they say you, you may not exit the United States contiguous 48 states. There's like all these rules that you agree to legally binding because they're part of some espionage thing. Fine. That is different, right? We're not talking about you people. You know who you are. You're not allowed to leave. That has nothing to do with your payroll. Right. Don't mix concepts. That's a security thing and a, and a government thing, possibly a military thing. You may have some uh, some binding requirements as to where you are present. Right. And you would know. Right. Can you go on vacation? No. Oh, OK. I mean, you can go to Yellowstone. Right. But can you go to Cancun? No. Right. So, OK. So if you can't vacation in Cancun, that's separate, has nothing to do with your payroll. You're not allowed to, to leave the United States. Okay, we're not talking about those people. They know they can't leave the US. If you go to your employer and say, I live in Mexico, I live in Nicaragua, they don't hear where you live because that's not part of their terminology. It's not part of their world. They don't ever care where you live, right? It's inappropriate for them to know because that's, it's not exactly something they're not allowed to know, but it's really close, right? You're not supposed to tell them your marital status. You're not supposed to tell them your race. You're not supposed to tell them a whole bunch of different things. Those things are private and saying your address can indicate other factors in your life, like how rich you are, what kind of family you come from, what race you are, whether or not you're married. That's why addresses, while technically something you are allowed to disclose, aren't appropriate to disclose, except for when they're sending you something. Oh, we have to mail you something. Okay, you can give them address, but it doesn't have to be the address you live in. It's just the address where you accept delivery. Sometimes I give my dad's house address because he's gonna be home. Sometimes I give a PO box. Sometimes I give my sister-in-law's house. Sometimes I give a place where I live. It could be whatever, but the address that you send things to is not necessarily the address you live at. These are different concepts, right? But we often just say, what's your address? Right? And we tie that with where you live in our minds, even though it's not accurate. So be aware that we're, we're really easily going to mix these things together. So think carefully about what you expose to an employer. Where do you live? What they mean is where is your residency? And what they really mean is where is your work jurisdiction residency? Okay. So for example, I am from Texas. My work residency jurisdiction is Texas. And it is Texas because that is the state I was last present in, that I last had residency in, in the United States. That state sees me as resident regardless of my national residency and regardless of my foreign residency. Those are all separate things. My state residency is Texas. That was established before I moved and it remains until I change it. So if someone wants to hire me in the United States and they say, where do you live? I have to hear where is your state tax residency? That is the only, absolutely only acceptable meaning of that question that they may ask you. They are allowed to use soft phrases to do so, but that is the thing they mean. You never answer the country that you're visiting. You never answer all these other things. You say, Texas or New York or wherever you would have to pay state taxes, right? Because just because you move away doesn't mean you don't pay state taxes, which is why we talk about getting residency in a non-taxing state before you leave the United States so that you don't have to worry about tax problems with your state. Not that problems is it, they're happy to take your money wherever you live, problems to us as foreigners is that we don't want to pay state taxes. A lot of states don't necessarily tax you if you're foreign resident that is by state. I can't speak to every state. I uh, have a Texas residency. We don't pay state taxes regardless, just like Florida, just like Tennessee. So we don't have to worry about those problems. It's one of the reasons that we like having Texas as our residency. Okay. So that is what you answer. And that is the only thing you answer. And you're going to say, but Scott, I'm not living in Texas. That is honestly a lie. In reference to your job, you are living in Texas or wherever it is that you're at, right? In my situation, it is Texas. Texas doesn't care that I'm there physically. That is not part of the situation. You're, we're, we're tempted, right, to take things we feel must be true and add them both incorrectly to information that's being given and being volunteering things that should not be volunteered, right? 
and so this is, let's look at this from the perspective of a payroll company. And remember, I'm an employer in the United States, so I see this from both sides. I'm someone who has lived abroad, I'm someone who hire people who live abroad. My employees don't have to, to hide from me where they are, so I know where they are, I know what their payment jurisdictions are, I know when they're moving around, but that is besides none of my business, I just happen to know. Right, but I know it's none of my business. When things go to payroll, they get paid where they are tax resident, not, not where they happen to physically exist at the moment. Okay, these are very, very different concepts. And so if you talk correctly with your employers or with your payroll companies and only give them the information that they're allowed to ask for and only give them the correct information, this will protect you against a lot of confusion and a lot of misinformation and a lot of potential racism. And I hate to have to say it, but many, many US employers will use any belief that you are somehow involved in a country that is not the United States as a way to cut you off from pay, to fire you, because many people would rather pay more to have a person who would not be willing to send some of their money to spend their money in another country. I have had businesses flat out be willing to say, we don't want customers, not just, employ not just employees. We don't want customers, if those customers would even vacation in another country than the US. That's their right under US business law to turn down customers based on their willingness to vacation in another country, but it's a very strong statement. It's an amazing level of non-business, right? That is a, a, such an anti-business statement. I would lose money because I would never let someone lower cost or something else, something non-American happen, right? That's crazy. That is so anti-American, so anti-business, right? When we talk about capitalism, that's super anti-capitalism. Right, that's the state is more important than the business. Wow, like America is not the country for you. It's weird to be so pro-America with such an anti-American like approach to that. Like, wow, uh, give capitalism a chance. Like, it's a thing. Um, but like, so so that's the first piece. So why is it like this though? Why I don't mean that. Why are people like this? I mean, why does the system work this way? And now I'm going to explain it from the other side, and this is going to this is going to clear it up. But let me. So from a payroll perspective, the only thing that I have the right to, or need to, or reason to know, is where am I paying you, right? Where do you get taxed? Nothing else is my business. I don't need to send you a check. I'm just going to do a direct deposit. It's going to go into a bank. It's going to be a U.S. bank, right? Because you're an American. You have a U.S. bank account. I'm paying you in this state. It's got to be a bank that can take that payment. So it's going to be a U.S. bank. For me, that's Texas. It's going into my bank in Texas. It just gets deposited. They have my address in Dallas. Done. That is that is the world to payroll. They have no business asking or or needing to know or anything, anything else. And if they claim they do, they are lying because that is not how payroll works. They do not care where you happen to physically be at any given moment. And we're going to explain why in a second, or we're going to demonstrate why it doesn't make any sense and how you can think about it correctly to show how this is not working. So you can see them lying, right? It'd be pretty easy. So how do we know they're lying? How do we look at it from the other perspective? So from your perspective, from you, the employee, how does it work from your side? What makes all this work? Wow, suddenly the sun got super bright and I've got all kinds of glare on my face, but that's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna push through because this is good information that you need. Okay, so you're working for company X and you're in Nebraska. That company doesn't want you to work somewhere else or they want too much information about what you're doing. However, they're willing to let you work remote. Of course, many jobs will not let you work remotely. They will simply require that you be present in the office. Well, that's not gonna work for you because you can't be present in the office if you want to move to Nicaragua or somewhere else. So you need a job that lets you work remote. This is not really a big deal. Right, you're going to go apply for that job or maybe you already have that job and they say, uh, we're okay with you working remotely. You say, excellent, you have a set of things you gotta worry about. They're gonna say, well, you have to be US present. Right, there's a number of companies that will say that. This is, this is a soft one, so you gotta figure this out. So essentially no company has a, has a legal requirement for that. They're, they're, if they do, you're gonna know it from other factors. Um, but the real question is, are you an American? Are you going to get paid in the US? Are you tax present in the United States? 
well, yeah, I'm an American. My bank is in America. I'm in Nebraska. You're going to pay me in Nebraska. I'm in Nebraska. That is in the United States. Okay, so that solves the are you in the U.S. piece. You are in the U.S. That is where you're from. You're an American. If you come and ask me this, where are you? I'm in Dallas, Texas. That is where my banking is happening. That's where you're paying me. It's where my address is. That is where I am from a tax status, from an employment status. And legally, if you went to the U.S. government and said, is he here? Is this his location? They would say, yes, that is his legal government recognized location. That is the one and only legal answer to that question. Okay, we got to move out of the sun. Hopefully that's a little bit better. That is super bright. I've got I've got a, a GoPro light on my face, so hopefully that offsets like how crazy the light is. Happen to be right as the sun is going down pretty heavily. Anyway, so there's only one legal answer to this question from a government perspective. From a if you had to fill out a census form, if you have to fill out a uh, tax form, if you have to fill out a uh, uh, um, uh, jury duty form. There's only one legal answer, and that is the address that you are tax resident in. So there is an established legal government guideline as to what the answer is here. You should not be interpreting this in your own personal way. That is not appropriate or legal. You need to answer the actual thing that is being asked. So in that case, you are present in Nebraska. Yes, that is you. You're a Nebraska resident. Now, are you allowed to work while you travel? What if you're vacationing or whatever? Uh, can you, can you, do you have to be at home all the time or can you work from a coffee shop? Can you work from your parents' house? Can you work from your cousin's place? Can you work from Texas? Can you work from Massachusetts? Can you work from a hotel room? Can you work while you're on vacation? If the answer is no, and you probably don't need to ask this because you know all their employees are working while on vacation, right? Every business realistically is making you work when you travel or not. Right. Oh, well, we need this information from him. So, e e you know, email him while he's on vacation. He'll answer. That's fine. I don't have a problem with companies doing that. Some people do. I think it's absolutely fine. But it shows that they're OK with you working while you're traveling. So now the thing is, when you work remotely, vacation doesn't mean you're taking time off from work. It also can just be time that you're away from the house. So here's the trick. You're simply going on, and remember, you have these different concepts, right? When you work remotely, you have your vacation vacation. When you're not supposed to be being contacted by work, they'll probably contact you anyway. And you have your where you're at on any given day. I know my staff will work from a coffee shop. They'll work from their house. They'll go to their parents' house. All those things are normal. People move around and work in different locations all the time when they're working remotely. There's no reason that you can't go to another country and be traveling there and work from there. Right now, some companies are going to be really strict and they're going to try to figure out that you're not at home and they're going to maybe give you a fight and you just have to explain, look, I'm traveling while I work. I'm still tax resident in the US. Nothing has changed. There is no I'm just a tourist. Right. But this is the important thing. Legally, you are just a tourist. The United States sees you as a tourist. That is your legal status. That is your legal status in Nicaragua. Right. At least for the first few years. You are legally and in every sense a tourist, except for that very first thing we talked about at the very beginning. When you talk to your friends and you're just using English, you say, yeah, I live in Nicaragua, I live in Mexico, I live in Bangladesh, wherever. But from a legal standpoint, the United States considers you a citizen, because you are. The United States considers you tax resident in the United States, because you are. Your state has you as resident in that state, because you are. All of those things are true. You still have an address. Maybe not your house address. Maybe it's a P.O. box. Maybe it's a friend's house. Maybe it's a, a service, whatever. But someone's probably getting your mail. You can do that. Your bank is in the U.S. Your money goes to the U.S. If any, you know, secret uh, agent, secret agent, private investigator is what I meant to say, was, was trying to track you down, they would have all this evidence that you were in the United States. The only thing would be, but they're physically not here. We can look at their house. We know they're not physically here. When we get photographs of them, those photographs are laying on a beach in Nicaragua. Okay, they're in Nicaragua. But when you have that conversation and they say, but you're not in the United States, you say, not right this second, no. Are you saying we can't travel for vacation? We can never, where, what are the limitations that you can never be out of uh, uh, place, right? And a job can say, right, it is legal in the United States to go that extra step and say, no, 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 you're never allowed to travel, but they've got to state that stuff, right? And it's got to be consistent. Are other people allowed to travel? 
when they're, you know, are they allowed to go to different states? Are they allowed to go on vacation? Do they ever? And if they do, you've got a pretty strong legal case that they can't fire you. That's discrimination if they're basing it based on they don't like the country you traveled to, right? But you are able to make the absolute, completely concrete legal claim that you are a tourist. Every government involved, every official document is that you're a tourist. Tourist in a legal sense can be an indefinite thing. But a tourist, of course, when you're just talking to your friends, they know you're not really a tourist in Nicaragua. You live there, right? I live here, but my legal status to every government involved is tourist. And that's just the way it works, right? That's just how they categorize you. That has to do with um, what paperwork I have to fill out, how I have to pay my taxes, how I, I could be kicked out of the country. It's also important to note, at some point I will become a resident here, right? That is something that Nicaragua informs me of, and they have, I need to be a resident. Okay, doing the paperwork, no problem. At some point that will be approved and I will be a, an official resident of Nicaragua. However, residency is by country there is no it is not a universal thing right so when i become a resident of nicaragua that does not stop me from being a resident of the united states and it definitely doesn't stop me of being a resident of texas and so by being a resident in nicaragua has no bearing on anything right because that is purely a definition that nicaragua gives me i can have afghanistan grant me residency and i may never have set foot there they're not going to but they could if they wanted to that's just that's up to them and if they did that that does not affect anybody nobody recognizes some other country's residency as anything that is not a thing so when you become a resident of nicaragua for example it does not change a single thing to anyone it simply means you don't have to fill out as much paperwork in nicaragua as often from the United States perspective, you can become a foreign resident of the United States, meaning you're still a US citizen, but you're now resident somewhere else. What's interesting is that happens in the US long before someone like Nicaragua gives you residency. Meaning for people like me, I am not a resident of Nicaragua. I am also not a resident of the United States. However, I am a resident of Texas. This is very important. My state residency, my tax identification location remains Texas. I have in no way whatsoever given up my Texas residency. I have an address. I have a bank. I exist in Texas. But under the United States residency guidelines, I qualify. And now this is also important. The U.S. only has this concept at the IRS level. All other government agencies, I am a resident, right? But to the IRS, there is a uh, manner in which you can be listed as a non-resident uh, or foreign resident so that your taxes are handled differently and you, you still pay them right your payroll company doesn't need to know about that your nobody needs to know about it until you go and file with the irs you could let them know about it if you want like just like if you have kids you can tell your payroll company that you have dependencies and have them change how they do their taxes or you can not say anything if you don't want your employer to have any way to find out you have kids you don't have to tell anyone you're not required to tell anyone you then tell the IRS secretly later that is private and they will give you money back based on that. Same thing with if you're non-resident and you want to, no one to ever know, the payroll company never has to be informed, you can simply tell the IRS later, hey, I'm not actually resident. Can you uh, give me some money back? And they'll be like, yeah, sure, no problem. Thanks for letting us borrow it for a little while. Everything's cool, right? So you can still get those amazing tax benefits. You don't have to disclose it to anybody except the US government. And trust me, they already know right? They, they really know. So that there's no secrets. There's no, there's nothing sneaking around. There's, it's just who do you have to tell and when? And keeping that clear gives you a lot of power. So from a legal standpoint, I'm still an American citizen. I have no, I've not given up any rights. I just don't have to pay as many taxes. And in order to keep that tax status, I have a bunch of limitations that I have to live with. That's fine. And that's optional. I could, I could not give those up if I don't want to. And I am still completely resident in Texas. If I need to call the Texas Board of Education and say, I need educational resources, my kids are Texans. Texas will provide them just like that. No questions asked. They don't get to, they don't get to deny me health care. They don't get to deny me schooling. None of those things. Those things are guaranteed. I'm a Texan. I get them. And Texas never would deny those things, right? I'm not, not suggesting that they would ever try it, but they can't. I'm protected because I'm a Texan. I get all the resources of any other Texan. 
So that's, that's mentally how you have to think about these things. I'm a permanent tourist. I'm a long-term tourist. Just because you don't have a flight back doesn't make you not a tourist from a legal standpoint. Just because you buy a house and never plan to leave doesn't make you not a tourist. Just because you are thinking of yourself, just because you are physically present on a beach, just because you are all these things, you have to separate how you think about it from what is reality and what is what is your employment reality, what is your legal definitions. And that's one of the things that's interesting about humans, the idea of where do you live? Where are you resident? All those things are actually very soft concepts. We have the same problem in America that some people think of themselves as Americans, but other people may think of them as themselves as Irish Americans or Irish who are living in America. Like there's a lot of different things. And some people will say, no, nah, you don't get to be Irish because you, you, you know, you're third generation in America, you're an American. Right, but that, those things are really personal definitions, right? And it, it's more of how you think about yourself than anything else. My family comes from a Swiss enclave in the United States. And um, while I've spent very little time in Switzerland, I identify far more with my Swiss heritage than any American heritage. I think of myself as a Swiss non-national living in Nicaragua far, far more than I think of myself as being an American who is a tourist here. However, an American who is a tourist in Nicaragua is my legal definition, but my cultural definition is not. Those things are actually pretty soft when it comes to where do you live? Where are you resident? Where, where, where are you from? Right? All those things are, are very much a how you define it in your mind. Just like the entire concept of being Hispanic or Latino, um, is identified with, well, what are the cultures you grew up with? Well, now you have someone who has to, whether it's you or someone else, is defining which cultures are acceptable for being Latino, right? Oh, well, I know that you came from exactly the same DNA as this person over here, but you're, you learned a different language at home, or you didn't have pinatas, or you didn't celebrate your quince, so you're not a Latino. Like, based purely off of which things someone else externally defines as being the heritage of your people, that's backwards, right? The heritage of your people is what your people do, not your people are who have this set of cultural identities, yet that's how it's handled, right? So the same things apply here, that there's all these things, where you live, where you're resident, that come from within you, and then there's the legal definitions. That's the one that applies to an employer, that's the one that applies to payroll, that's the one that applies to your tax status. Those are clearly defined, they are not gray areas, they're not up for interpretation. You simply answer the legal answer every time, and it's gonna protect you a lot. There are employers who are going to cause problems. It, that is true. Good employers would never care. A good company will very clearly be like, um, I don't know how this works. Can you tell me? You can inform them, right? Even if you want to be open about it. But one of the mistakes that people say is, I want to move to Nicaragua. No, you don't. You're not moving to Nicaragua. Not to an employer, you're not. Not to a payroll company, you're not. Those are not the words. I'm going to be traveling and I expect that some of that time will be in Nicaragua. Some of that time may be somewhere else. I may be in a different place every day. I may not be, right? Don't commit to it. There's no reason to. For two reasons. One, it's not the, none of their business. But two, it's also potentially untrue. What if you come to Nicaragua and you don't love it? What if you come to Nicaragua and they don't let you stay? Those are possibilities. They're not likely. People love Nicaragua and they let you stay. But what if they didn't? That's a possibility. Well, what if you moved on to Honduras? Did you then lie that you were coming to Nicaragua? You don't really know, it's your plan, but it's just a plan, you're a tourist. You can move on to another place any time you're free to do so. Treat it that way. I'm a tourist, I'm starting in Nicaragua, we'll see what happens, right? Maybe I'm going on to El Salvador, maybe I'm going on to South Africa, maybe I'm going on to, you name it, or maybe I'm gonna spend an indefinite amount of time in Nicaragua because it's so fantastic, or maybe I'm gonna to go to Nicaragua, move on and come back. That's what I did. Right? I went to Spain, I went to Panama, I came to Nicaragua, then I went back to Europe for a while and I found myself coming back to Nicaragua to settle. I didn't have to disclose that to anyone, I was simply traveling around and eventually this is where I stopped traveling. But I will still be traveling, I'm planning on spending months in South America coming up pretty soon. I don't need to say, hey, I'm gonna be driving from place to place, change my payroll every time, right? When you go on vacation, you don't call your payroll company and say, hey, set me up as an employee of, of Paraguay for the three days that I'm driving across it. I'm gonna get a Paraguayan bank. You're gonna figure out how to take out Paraguayan taxes. You're gonna pay me in Paraguay as I drive across. Of course you don't do that. That makes no sense whatsoever. We all know that when you're traveling, you don't change any of those things. You get paid where you're from, you simply take money out of the ATM or whatever. And 
it's easy to get confused and think because I'm doing it for a long term, those things are no longer true. That is one of the reasons why people are constantly asking, well, how do I get a bank account in Nicaragua? You don't need one, right? I'm not saying you can't have one. I'm not saying you shouldn't have one, but the reasons that people think they need it is almost universally wrong. You do not need a bank account here. You are not moving your, your existence to Nicaragua. You're moving your physicality to Nicaragua. You are becoming a long-term term tourist. You don't need to move your personal infrastructure unless something much more dramatic is happening. So I hope that this helps explain why we say you don't want to work in Nicaragua and why employers are confused because you're telling them you're moving to Nicaragua. That is, those are the incorrect terms. You're not moving to, you're, you're vacationing in indefinitely. You're not uh, changing your, your residency. You're not changing. You are still an American, you're still a Canadian. You're still a Texan. You're still a, a, a Brit. That's where your money's going to go. You're going to pull it out of that bank. No one needs to know. It is not their business. Thanks for joining me. If you'd like to help support the channel and help bring this kind of content to everyone, keep me on the air, able to provide this kind of information, hit me up above buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me and helps make this possible. If you're looking for uh, direct assistance with a relocation or uh, just guidance, answer questions, whatever, you can shoot us an email at info at relocatenicaragua.com. We'd love to answer questions for you, help set you up with services that we offer for people who are looking to potentially move. As always, please like and subscribe. Share with family and friends. Tell them about the show. Set some links on uh, Reddit, on, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, wherever you are. Let people, Facebook for sure, let people know about the show. Get the word out there. And I will see all of you tomorrow.